Hello everyone and welcome back to Chess Club. My name is Noel and I'm here with our updated Serene Luxem deck profile. As many of you know, this is the deck that we have been very passionately working on for a very long time, uh, especially the past two months since Deft Executor's uh, reveal. But even from before then, uh, Pickle Sword first created this deck when the Serene Spirits were first revealed back before Fractured Crown was even released. And it has gone through many many uh iterations since then um and it's truly a joy to see where the deck is now and it is it means a lot uh whenever i've been at events uh recently and seeing people playing this deck that we've all put so much time and effort into and seeing how much fun they're having with it and knowing that uh the efforts we made kind of were able to contribute to it. Uh, I know a lot of people thought that Luxem was not in a very good place, um, and that thanks to especially Pickle Sword's efforts now, people are realizing that the deck is very, very good. Um, personally, I think that this is the best deck in the format, and uh, this video is going to kind of talk about the entire thought process of the choices of why we run the cards in this deck that we do. If you're just interested in the deck list, it's been available, or the deck lists, I should say. They've been available on Luxera's map for many weeks um, by now, um, as it has been a long season. Uh, and this video is instead going to just talk through the why of the list. And it's why we haven't made this video yet, because we are competitive players first and foremost, and we wanted to kind of keep that to ourselves as we are going through um, Ascent Ontario into Nationals. Uh, but now that the major events are kind of over for the time being, uh, we're going to lay it all out on the table and um, kind of really walk through our thought process. Um, as this has been a labor of love from everyone in Chess Club, um, truly everyone has played a very noble part in getting this deck to where it is, whether it's been brainstorming the list or testing the list extensively or testing against the list extensively. Um, as a fun tidbit, I believe that no one in this game has played against Luxem more than Matt has, and I think that's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, so uh, in case you haven't seen the original deck profile that I did for this deck um, after the Fractured Crown Michigan Regionals, uh, I'm going to be talking through, I'm going to do a similar format to that video, but it will notably be different content, of course, because the list has come a very long way since then. Um, and so I'm going to be talking through all of the card choices and, as I said, why the deck is the way it is. Um, so Spirit of Serene Fire, obviously this is a Serene deck. This deck will not exist without this card. Um, Plain and simple. Like, you could run normal Fire, Lux, and Xander, but the consistency that the Glimpse gives and the cushion that the Cover 6 gives is impossible to understate how essential it is for this deck. The fact that your level 3 has 31 life, and almost more importantly, the fact that your level 1 has 25 life, is so, so, so important at letting you survive the early turns against these aggressive decks like Fire, Xander, Aggro. Um, and even against the ally lists, um, which I don't consider to be aggro decks, um, but they do put a lot of power, a lot of damage out pretty quickly. Um, the Serene uh, Recover lets you get to the stage of the game where your Luxem cards can start having an impact. Uh, then, of course, we have the Xander Lineage. Um, Deft Executor, absolutely love this card so much. Always Watching is better than people give it credit for. Uh, making Thieving Cut power 4 is very good. However, Deft is way better. This card is this card is amazing. It is on the power level of Orion Blade Master and Merlin Memory Thief. I don't believe this card is broken. Um, I have seen some people claiming that. I think that's just fundamentally not true. This card is very good, but it is in line with the other strong level 2s that we have in the game. Uh, being able to add back any assassin action or attack card... Um, it just is a guaranteed plus one and a deck that needs plus one so much because you are running the Serene Spirit. And so you're starting the game minus one. 
Um, if you are not familiar with the terminology of minus one, plus one, I am talking about hand size or hand and memory size. So your total influence. And if you, you, when you're playing a level three deck, almost every single action you take needs to be taken when thinking about your influence, especially in this deck. Um, because you go minus six to level up to your level three, right? You're spending one to go to level one, two to go to level two, three to go to level three. So when you start the game with a seven card hand, if you go then turn or turn two, turn three, level or or turn four, I guess, then you're at 10 cards in hand because so you've drawn three cards and you've gone minus six. So you're at four cards in hand already. And that's assuming you only made neutral plays. Neutral plays being cards that are not gaining or losing you influence. So Scry the Sky is a neutral play. Fast Cure is a neutral play. Creative Shock is a neutral play. Creative Shock discarding a Fast Cure is a plus one play. Um, and so when you're on a minus one from your spirit, the Xander plus one is very, very, very important. On top of that, it lets you do very nice plays with Juggle Knives, Thieving Cut, your removal spells um, to kind of just maintain tempo in the game state. And getting the Plurup Counter is extremely important for Insignia the Kurhazi. This card, we, um, Pickle especially, was kind of vocal about not liking this card when it first came out. And um, I agreed with him. Um, but I agree with him in the that discussion was kind of centered on the context. Um, when Insignia came out, this card was not good. But that's not to say that the card itself wasn't good. Uh, so I guess... The card was good. Insignia is a very powerful card, but the card was poorly positioned because there wasn't a good way to make use of Insignia. Um, in order to make Insignia good, you need to run a high density of prepared cards in your deck. Um, prepared cards are only good if you have reliable access to prep counters. However, a lot of sources of prep counters aren't very good, um, at least in a level three style deck. Um, you know, in Fire, you only have Mark the Target. Mark the Target sucks in this kind of deck. It's good in Fire Zander Aggro, um, because it does damage and it gets you prep counters for more damage immediately. So it's just a it's a burn spell. Mark Target in this deck is just a minus one, um, which is awful. Um, so the reason that Insignia is now a very viable card in this deck is because of Deft giving you the extra prep counter, which is phenomenal because this card is amazing. This card draws you two cards. I mean it it only will it usually only draws you a single card. However, there are a lot of games where it draws you two cards. There are some games where I've drawn three cards off of it, and that is just absolutely insane. The other great part of the card is just the three tap. Um, it does, like, it, three tap do nothing would even be fine on it. And the reason for that is because once you're level three, you want neutral plays to get cards into memory uh, in order to trigger your, or for Xander to reveal and get your Luxum effects. Um, so just having a way to do that is great. Getting the prep counters build up to then get pay off your prepared cards is just it's beautiful synergy um so yes yeah, so we run insignia and we run luxera's map um this card is one of the best cards of the game and i now fully understand why it has the restrictions it does um so this card enters rested and it's tapped to banish and search is a slow speed effect um this card would be absurd if it didn't have both of those restrictions um prior to deft i think that it didn't need both. Uh, I think it could have gone away with only having one of them. But um, Luxem is in a point now where Luxera's map needs to have both of those restrictions to give it uh, play and interaction to make it a healthy card for the game. Um, but this card's amazing uh, and kind of no spray. This is all kind of expected Luxem stuff. Um, now, the most important card, not the most important card, but one of the most important cards in the material next, Quicksilver Grail. Um, this is a card that I had messed around with in the main deck back in uh, the end of Fractured Crown format. And that is because uh, Matt is my local. And so at Store Champs, um, I, at Store Champs, you kind of know your local meta. And so you can tweak your list for that. And so I knew that Matt was going to be playing Erupting. So I main boarded Quicksilver Grail um, to have Lantern in, and Quick Grail Lantern in it for a hopeful edge in that matchup. Because that matchup is horrible. Um... However, I didn't consider, and none of us considered, the power of Grail in the main deck of just, in general, not even just in a highly teched deck for a local meta. Um, 
we would not have thought about it if we didn't see the list from the card merchants Hamilton Regionals um, that uh, Dees was piloting. Um, he was running uh, our Ontario list uh, mostly, but with a couple variations, including mainboard Quicksilver Grail and mainboard Gawain's. Um, seeing that made us kind of consider it, and we realized that we absolutely wanted mainboard Grail. We started testing with it, realized how powerful it was, um, and the reason it's so good is because you have uh, you have these three defensive cards um, that you're playing in the deck, um, and then also these cards. And I have grailed all five of these cards. Um, I have grailed these four cards extremely often. This card sometimes doesn't usually come with the grail insignia, um, but so grail is grail is great not only because it protects a card but because it denies information to your opponent. And that information denial scales how good it is based on how many cards you have that are good to Grail. Um, so against, you know, Water Allies, these four cards are all good to Grail. Against Fire Xander aggro, these three cards are all good to Grail. Um, in the mirror, it's more telegraphed. You know, you're Grailing this card. Um, you will sometimes grail this card, but you're grailing safeguard most of the time. Um, so, yeah, but the fact that you have so many cards you can grail means that it's live in almost every single matchup. Even against a deck like Wind Allies, um, grail has value. And so I, I will never play this deck without grail again in the main board. I think grail is that important to the deck. Um, in terms of plus ones, we still have, or we have Insignia is our plus one. This is our GCR. Um, we also run Fire Bobble because having a pure materialized draw card is very important in the deck. Um, and uh, that is most important in our race matchups. So against Fire Merlin, against Fire Eye, in the mirror. So that's why we run Fire Bobble in the main. Um, and then we run Chalice because this card is just absolutely exceptional. Um, drawing two cards is amazing. It's one of my favorite cards of the game. And there's just so many cool plays you can do with it. With like, you're at 19 health, so end of turn you juggle knives, put yourself to 20, you materialize this. You're at 18 health, so you ping yourself with Light Weaver's Assault, and then you pop this before you cover down with Sights. Um, or your opponent tries to play around Chalice, they leave you at 17 health, and then you just go and grab Terrifying instead, and you recover more. And like, or they put you to 24 health, and it's like, ah, oh, I can kill you. It's like I can grab Chalice, or I can make a play to not die with like Terrifying. And then I'm going to recover some, and you're going to do more damage to me, so I'm still going to be at 20 next turn anyways, so I can delay my Chalice and still get the value out of it. Like, there's there's so many cool lines you can do with Chalice that I find very fun. For the Luxum package, uh, we are... It is still mostly the same as before. Uh, we have the four Light Weavers, the four Luxum Sight, the four Gleaming Cut. Um, it's... These cards are good. Uh, we have now the main change is we got up to four Excalibur. We're still running three and cover the plot. The reason that we got up to four Excalibur is because this card is amazing. Um, plain and simple. I mean, uh, so the reason it's, it's so good is because it's unconditional removal. Um, it just says destroy any card and or destroy target non-champion object. Um, but that is extremely powerful because there's just so many good things to destroy. Um, in the mirror, you almost want five Excaliburs. Because you want to break their map, you want to break their insignia, you want to break their grail, you want to break their safeguard amulet. Um, you also, and then you, but you also like you're not going to draw all of them, so you kind of, so there's like, like every Excalibur has a use in the mirror. Um, against water allies, you want to break their scepter. You want to break um, if they're playing Diana. You want to break their shadows twin. You want to kill a like a three four paladin. You want to kill a Gildas. Um, you want to play kill a trapper sometimes even. Uh, you want to kill their safeguard amulet. Um, this card killing safeguard amulet comes up so many times. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this card is just amazing. Um, the biggest reason it went to full or was probably because of Fire Diana. Um, just killing Shadow's Twin is too important. And because if that card sits in the field, you you kind of just lose. Um, I mean, you, you've survived games um, with like eight Creeping Torment or nine Creeping Torment. Um, but it's not likely. Um, and the games are much easier if you can just kill a Shadow's Twin and exercise Curse, your two torments, and not die. 
So anyways, Luxem package is kind of standard and there isn't much to really talk about with that. Uh, well, I say kind of standard. Um, we're making the standard, I guess, but like, anyways, uh, four dungeon guide, obviously, four fast cure, four exercise curses. Um, this is now the next like big deviation to the deck. Um, it's the biggest change we made after Ontario. Um, the reason that we've gone down to only eight floating memory, as I fumble about with these cards to make it look pretty, we've gone down to eight floating memories. We cut the two stalwart shield mate. Um, is because of two things. Number one, going down from 10 floating memory to 8 floating memory impacts our creative shock math only slightly. Um, it is a, if I remember correctly, it is a 3% um, less likely chance that you're going to draw um, these with creative shock. And um, so over the course of a major tournament, that's going to affect one or two games. Um, if you think about, uh, you know, a 3% chance means out of every 33 games, you are using it one less time. So like if you went from, I think it's a 36 to a 30% or a 36 to a 33% chance. Um, so over the course of a 33 game period, um, you know this math, right? Yeah. Over the course of a 33 game period, you're having one less game where you are opening with creative shock and exercise curses. 33 games, that would be 11 best of threes if all of them went to game three. So realistically, a lot of games are going only to two. So it affects basically one game in one match in one of one round in one major event where you're playing 12 rounds of Swiss and top cut. So basically, it doesn't matter in that sense. Um, the more important reason that we did it uh, and then, so cutting all this thing gives room, but the bigger reason is because uh, Stalwart sucks right now. Um, there is Karazi Arsonist, there is Scavenger Raccoons, there is Sea Sprite Diver, there is Snow Fairy, and all of those cards really, really punish you for playing out the Stalwart Shieldmate. And it is not worth having Shieldmate to like resolute it to block Diana attacks to then open up the extreme like punish plays of well if your only turn one play is a shield mate playing against fire xander do you play the shield mate and then cry a lot when they kill it and arsonist or arsonist kill it or kill it and then play raccoon or do you pass turn like neither of those are good options so instead we just want to maximize out on our two cost fast floats which are these two cards um these cards are great because they say level up for free um and then this just makes the other match good, and this card recovers a lot of the time. So, yeah. Next up, um, speaking of Creative Shock, we have four of Creative Shock. Um, this is the reason they're playing player. Yeah, that's it. Um, getting plus ones is very important in a deck that has um, the minus one to start. So, Shock with Float is your best form of opening. Just start recovering your influence. Um, in order to your dream math with uh, influence is to have two plus ones by the time you hit level three. Um, so those plus ones are shock plus float, deft executor, um, going second, or taking off turn um, in your leveling. Um, the reason you want two plus ones is because that means when you turn three dungeon guide to three, which you have dungeon guide, it's like 77% of the time. So you usually have dungeon guide on turn three. Um, the reason that you want that is because it leaves you three cards in hand, and three cards in hand is what you need to make most high or high impact plays, which is what the deck is sent around. Um, when you're playing level three decks, you want to have plays that do a lot when you first get to your stuff. So that can be playing Excalibur, playing Uncover the Plot, revealing Gleaming Cuts, playing a Thieving Cut, playing a Planet Explosive. Um, Scry the Skies is like. It's not high impact, but it finds you more cards. This guy's good, and that you can do on two influence, which used to be the best play before, because you were never hitting double plus ones. The, before, the best line was like, go level three, scry your last card down, get to memory. Um, three is also very important, because it means that you can then turn four, play an insignia, tap insignia, put down three to memory. Okay, prep kind of reveal your luck some stuff. That's the line that you most want to do if you have like Thieving Cut as your card, um, if you don't need the tempo of like playing Thieving Cut immediately. Um, and then we have four plant explosive. Um, this card is the reason the deck works again now, um, which is because of Deft Executor. So Deft Executor is the reason the deck works again now. 
Um, we were messing around with this card, or at least brainstorming with this card before when this video was first revealed. The problem was that you never had prep counters. Um, you need removal early, and um, having thieving, you get the one prep counter from Xander 1, that's not enough. Because you, if you draw a double plant explosive, then one of them is guaranteed dead. And also the card's just a minus one. And you can't really afford minus ones in the deck. So Death Executor is a plus one, so balances this out. And um, yeah, so drawing cards things again is very powerful with it. And um, having having the extra prep card from Deft lets you play this because it's gonna be live more often. Have more prepare cards lets you play insignia. Which lets you get more value or let's get more value big insignia and Zing is very powerful. So it just all works together very synergistically. Then we have one focus flames, it's just the fifth plant explosives. Um it's not a one of, it's a fifth copy of the card. Um Yeah. Uh it's just more early removal. Um the problem with allies is clearing things early, um, which is why we're running that over like an extra resolute stand or something. So, going along with our Assassin cards, we have the four Planted. Um, we then also have four Thieving Cut. And we have four General Knives. Uh, these cards are all amazing. I've already talked about Planet Explosives, so we can get that card out of here. But, so we have 12 Assassin cards um, for Death Executor. So Death Executor is almost always a plus one. Um, and that, or, so he's a neutral play with Planted. He's a plus one with these cards. So these cards already replace themselves. Um, so... Because of that, um, you are you are very often getting your plus one with Deft. Thieving Cut is absolutely incredible. Um, neutral removal is everything that you need in a level three deck um, because you're going down and influence so much to level up that you need to play neutral plays. But you also need to interact with the board. So neutral removal is kind of a requirement almost to play like an effective level three deck unless you're playing a deck that can like cheat a lot. Like, uh, Crux shoots a lot, because uh, you're playing Flame Sweep and you clear a bunch of stuff. Like, that's that's a high-value line. But Crux kind of gets folded over when it doesn't have Flame Sweep by al against allies, and then you're just, like, leveling and not really anything, and you're getting influence, then you get to level 3 and you try to stabilize, but unless you can, like, slam a deer down um, quickly, you kind of just lose. It's because you don't have neutral move on the deck. Incendiary Fractal is pretty good, um, and I think for the way it's going, Incendiary Fractal is good in Fire Maryland, but um, this isn't about... Uh, that so this card just replaces itself is amazing juggle knives is also the single most underrated card in this deck people constantly ask if you can cut juggle knives and we have to constantly tell people no do not cut this card this card is absolutely amazing for the deck um being able to put lux into memory at fast speed is incredible um the chip damage from it comes up a lot you can cycle your hand if you're on the luxum if with um uh deft where like you end a turn juggle level up grab back deft or grab back juggle prereq juggle draw another card just to help dig into your luxon cards before you dg up um but it, again also though that if you already have luxon cards in hand then you just don't prereq it because you're going to sit down and banish it you guys want to risk the banishing luxon cards so these cards are amazing uh next up we just have our increased consistency uh we just force cry the skies to serum um, this card is two more Creative Shock or two more Scry of Skies. Kind of think about it two different ways. Um, early game just digs you for Dungeon Guide, which is extremely important. And uh, late game, it finds you Luxem card, which is also very important. Um, same thing with Scry, neutral line early game. Late game digs your Luxem cards, extremely important. Um, these cards just help really smooth out the deck and ensure that you are hitting your Luxem cards as fast as possible. Uh, and then we have three Resolute Stands because uh, it wins you the game against Fire Xander and it just helps buy you time against ally decks. It's very important. Uh, we have two Gawain. Um, this is a card we were already considering um, in the main deck, um, especially because we expected a high amount of mirrors. And then um, kind of Deez was right at the main deck and we're like, ooh, hopefully people don't catch on to that as well. Um, it basically just replaces Gawain from a previous list, and we expected a higher amount of mirrors going to Nationals, just how popular the deck was picking up looking at the regional results. Um, but, um, 
yeah, this card's amazing. It's just very versatile. It performs in almost every single level 3 matchup, though it is mainly here for the mirror. Uh, just a little bit ripping like a light result for your opponent is very high impact. Um, and yeah, against Merlin, you just rip an Incarnate Majesty or a Fireball. Um, against Rai, you can rip like their Peer or their Advent, depending on like what they're lacking from their hand. Um, and it also just gives you information, which is very important. Information is king in card games, um, so just knowing what your opponent has is very useful. Uh, then the last card in the main deck is Oasis Trading Post. Um, for whatever reason, no one outside of us has run this card, even after we revealed it. Um, so this card was in our deck at Nationals, and then no one was running it at Regionals. No one ran it at Oceania Nationals. No one's running it at um, Southeast Asian Nationals. No one's running it at other like, foreign regionals. And I do not know why. This card is amazing. Um, it is it is sort of an extension of the Serum Scry package. In a way, it's a third Serum. Um, but it is so much more than that. Um, this card was kind of... Its need was identified by Burner when we were testing the Mirror. Because in the Mirror, if you destroy your opponent's Insignia and they don't have neutral plays in their hand, they're in a really bad spot. Um... And so he identified this problem, and then Pickle suggested, well, why don't we try Waste Trading Post? Um, it's a card you can dig for in the mirror, because you dig through so much of your deck in the mirror already. And it gives you the functionality of, of Insignia, but it also is Excalibur-proof, quote-unquote, because your opponent cannot afford to Excalibur both these cards, which I was kind of getting at earlier talking about Excalibur in the mirror, is you need to break Map, Grail, and Safeguard, um which means there's one more Excalibur for one of these. They can't break both of them. And Oasis is just very important at filling that slot in the mirror of letting you have initial plays. But also, Glimpsing 2 is extreme... I, I can't understate how important every turn Glimpse 2 is. Because it means that you're looking through up to three cards a turn when your opponent's only looking through one card a turn. Just in their like draw effect. Um, and so you're going to find more Luxem than your opponent, on average. Um, and seeing more Luxem is sort of one of the big key cards in the mirror. So it helps turn the mirror from a battle of like, well, who sees more Luxem to we're having an edge because we are going to see more Luxem. And having that kind of deck building edge is extremely important. It's also very good against, uh, ally decks, um, because make a dude is very good. Because having a 1-1 one, one means that your Light Wizard Assault is now a 3 damage removal spell when you reveal it. So you reveal it, you do 2 or something, and you have a dude and you kill this thing. So end of their turn, you make a dude, you can go to your turn, you can uh, uh, reveal the Light Weavers, ping two things, dude attack, kill a thing, make another dude, kill another thing. And it's like, wow, I just killed two dudes. When before, I could have only killed one dude if I didn't have this card. So, this is amazing. Um, it's kind of like how killing Dutch guys is important. Um, it is like having just more access to one power beaters, and that's really cool. And then gathering sometimes happens. You only ever really gather if you have already glimpsed the top through like Scry or Serum and know that you know what's on there. So you just gather instead if you don't have the stuff to make a dude or even like the mirror because dudes don't really do anything in the mirror. Uh, that's live. Actually, made dudes in the mirror just help beat down an opponent, but that was a weird game. Uh, I only have it once. Moving on to the sideboard, this is where the deck has changed the most since Ontario, and um, we, I think, caught those people by surprise at Nationals with it. Our people were very intrigued at the sideboard we were running. Um, but first, the, the normal part of the sideboard is just Water Bottle, GCR, and other Focus Flames. Um, this Focus Flames also, um, here we're going to go, Focus Flames slash Serum. Uh, at Nationals, there are five of us from the deck. Myself, Ver, Burner, Mr. Mulligan, and Pickle Sword. Rex would have been the sixth, but um, his plane had infinite delay problems, so he wasn't able to make it. But uh, Pickle Sword ran Serum, and Ver was going to run Serum. The rest of us ran Focus Flames. The idea being just that this is extra removal against allies, which we were worried about being a problem. Um, and Serum is just extra filter against uh, other level 3 decks, and so it was a debate between which is more important, 
swapping out your focus lines for this against Merlin and Rai, or swapping out um, one of your Gawains for the focus lames against um, allies. And so you're kind of split on that. There wasn't really a right way to do it. Uh, Water Bobble, just swap Fire Bobble against Water Decks and GCR. Um, I wish I didn't play. Um, this card was basically Wind Bobble. It was the intention for it. However, our thinking on running it over Wind Bobble was that against a deck like Fire Arcane Rai, we would want to bring in this over Grail and have both it and Fire Bobble. Good in theory. However, we didn't have really time to test the matchup a ton going into it. And what we found in practice um, is that against Arcane Rai, one, you don't have time to materialize both Grail and or both GCR and Fire Bobble. We're also materializing um, your Insignia and Safeguard Amulet and hopefully Map. But also, if you materialize Map, um, Rise of Sword and Disintegrates, uh, which we disrespected and we said they're just going to side them out against us um, or whatever. And so you play your naked map, and they disintegrate it, and now you are in a big tempo loss. So instead, in the mirror, or against um, the, not the mirror, sorry, against Rai, it's just better to grail your map than play GCR, because you'd rather a guaranteed Luxem card than just one random influence. And if you need the one influence, you play Fire Bobble. Um, anyway, so this card should have been Wind Bobble. Um, also, for the record, to get on tape, I think it's dumb that Bobbles exist. These cards are GCR, um, and be able to play Grail with Bobbles is dumb. I think that's wrong. But, anyways. So then, the other part of the sideboard, which kind of spread around the room at Nationals like Wildfire, was the water package. Four Fracturized and Serious Serene Water. Um, so the idea behind this is that, yes, it's good against Erupting, however, it is not for erupting specifically erupting is the side benefit of this package however this was mainly brought in to fight fire diana umbra because that matchup is very difficult however if they double dg you to taser shot you which is why the matchup is difficult you can just fracturize their shadows to win and now the matchup is an auto win if they don't double dg you then you're fine because you're not taking the 8 tear shot damage, or the 16 tear shot damage. 8 tear shot damage is livable. 0 tear shot damage is very livable. 16 is not livable. So, having this access makes the Fire Dan Umber matchup that much better. And, shockingly, actually, I shouldn't say shockingly, most people didn't realize it. Everyone thought this was for erupting, can't blame them. It seems very telegraphed that it's for erupting. Um, which kind of works to our benefit, or should have worked to our benefit, and probably didn't actually play against that many Umbra. But, um, it is also good against Erupting, because Fractures and Lantern is very good against them. Um, they can Dustblade it, but if they Dustblade it, in response, you just play Excalibur. Um, so if you don't know this ruling, with Dustblade Communion, it's a Fantasia, with an alternate or with an additional cost to banish an Astro and card. When it enters the field, the Onyx Effect goes on the stack. When the Onyx Effect resolves, it checks the property of the banished card, and then if it's an Astra, destroy Fantasia. If it's Umbra, champions get maximum level. Um, this is a very weird interaction. It is the only interaction like this in the game. It does not affect the air Fantasia currently. Um, but because it checks the property of a card that it banished as cost, if it is no longer in the same place when it resolves, it cannot check the property of that card. It's sort of like if you're copying a file off of a USB drive, and the USB drive is unplugged in the middle of the file copy. Um, it just, it's not able to check the resolution of it. So with the unmatched effect of display on the stack, you Excalibur, target dust communion, it's destroyed, it's effect fails to resolve, your fractured lantern stays on the field. And now you've won the game, basically automatically. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's the exciting spice about this. Um, definitely we'll continue to run it, um, as long as Erupting and Fernando Umbra are popular. Should give them Limelight, just one, um, the Southeast Asian Nationals with, um, Fernando Umbra, I expect that it will stay popular. So, moving on, um, 
some cards uh, i guess now I'll cover how the ontario list was different um we had two star shieldmate in the main which i talked about we had choking fumes in the main as opposed to those two um uh let's see we had that in main over fire bobble and then the uh quicksilver grail was gcr in the main um i've already talked about this we think this is much better now so we'll run this package now um and then the sideboard at Ontario was this with Orb of Regret. Orb is a very good card in the deck. Um, it just gives you a guaranteed shuffle and it lets you filter for Luxem pieces. However, um, with the water package, we felt that there just wasn't room for it. So with the baubles in the deck as well. Uh, we ran to Blanche. These Blanche just became Gawain's. So they're effectively still on the list. They serve a very similar role. And then we ran three Spurn. Um, Spurn was her fire and Umbra. Um, it's just a more, it's a smaller package to cover the deck. And this is the sideboard that you saw most people running at Southeast Asian Nationals and at Oceania Nationals was a sideboard similar to this one, not like our water-based one. Um, it is, if you need the space, you can swap to this, but the water package is more effective against Flaritana because it's fast speed. Also, fractures a float, which is useful, um, as opposed to just like the minus one. So yeah, that's how the list was different in Ontario. Um, basically, it just got better. It, the list just got strictly better. Um, now the other interesting variations are um, at Michigan or at the Houston Regionals. Um, I got seventh place. Um, so I made mean, top eight with uh, this. Um, this. So I, I ran, still ran this and the sideboard. But I swap. I cut the GCR and the um, the GCR and the Focus Flames for a Serum and a Gawain. The reason for this is because a lot of the Ally decks made top thirty-two, and a lot of our decks didn't. So I expected a high erupting um, field, and so just tweaking this just helped cover that. Um, Gawain's good against erupting because you rip their Rhapsodies, or more importantly, you rip their Dusk Lights, um, and so it's just a consistency piece. So these just came in over the um, the Oasis and the Focus Flames. Um, yeah, this was solid. Um, I think it was the right call for the event, um, but not really much going forward. And then um, at Michigan Regionals just recently, I did still run the GCR. Um, I wish that I just ran Wind Bobble. I don't know why I didn't just run Wind Bobble. Um, just run Wind Bobble. Um, and then I ran Caliburn. This card uh, was um, first used by Geo in one of the Australian, I think it was the Greensboro Australian Nationals, or Regionals, not Nationals. Um, this card is just excellent. It, um, we thought about the card before just as a good answer to Rye, but we didn't think about its applications beyond that, and so it never made the cut in any of our lists. Um, Geo realized, or was thinking though, and what he realized with the card is that it's very good against basically any level 3 deck. In the mirror, it shuts off the reveals for a turn. Against Merlin, it's good tempo play. Um, this card just has a lot of versatility that makes it worth running my opinion, at least in the current format. And then at Michigan Regionals, the other thing I did um, is I played Vanishing Sight in, in instead of Resolute Stand. Um, I think this card is definitely by the Resolute Stand, and I will be using this over Resolute Stand moving forward. It just has higher um, synergy because it's an assassin action, so you can add it back with Death Executor. So you can go turn two this, turn three, level up to Death to add this back, play it again to level up to level three, um, which is just a very nice play. And it just saves you a lot of life. So yeah, that is the deck profile. Um, thank you everyone uh, for your interest in this deck. Thank you everyone that has kind of shared their kind words saying how much they like the deck and how much fun they've been having playing it. I think that this deck is the most quintessentially Grand Archive deck in the game because of how the Luxum mechanics, or I guess not as this deck, but Luxum in general is the most Grand Archive um, feeling thing in the game because of how intrinsically it works with memory which is the defining mechanic of grand archive 
Um, it's the resource management and the leveling up and using le uh, level three cards that make the game special, in my opinion. And this deck does that like nothing else. So I absolutely love this deck. Um, I hope other people continue to enjoy it. Thank you so much for Pickle Sword for creating the original format of this deck and making um, most of the adjustments to the deck over time. A lot of the way the deck has evolved at this point is we're testing it and Pickle thought of a lot of the changes for it and we test it more and we test it more and we're all brainstorming ideas, but really 95% of the list is Pickle Swords. Um, and yeah, so... That's not to downplay, though, the work everyone else has put into it. Um, everyone is test... Literally everyone in Chess Club has either had an important um, role to play in just heavily test the deck, brainstorm the deck, or test against the deck. So, yeah. Um, thank you to truly everyone in Chess Club for helping with this deck. I love it, and I enjoy Grand Archives so much right now, especially because of this deck. Um, so, thank you everyone, uh, and to all of you, thanks for watching, um, I hope that you found this, um, kind of deep dive interesting, and, uh, I will be looking forward to making more content about, hopefully, Luxum going forward. Uh, take care everyone, have a great day.